quick note before we get started. Thanks go out to Sasame-chan for doing a video reviewing Lux's artwork. We'll throw a link in here and down in the description so you can go check it out. Lord Ganon, we have a problem! What? There's a strange man in just his shorts running towards the castle, killing all the guards! Huh? Ah! And it's Link in his underwear. You know there's going to be speed runs of that, you know? Of course there is, since this is a bit like Chrono Trigger, where you can go to the end boss at any time, but you probably don't want to. <laughs> and that particular scene wasn't my idea, it was a Tumblr post I saw. Just to clear up anything. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild E3 Impressions. Uh, first we'll get my reactions because my reactions are- Oh my god, it's gorgeous! I want to climb everything! I want to beat the goblins, I want to ride the horses, I want to chop down trees! There will be not a single tree left in Hyrule once I'm done! As if there's enough axes, because they do break now. <laughs> but yes, I just want to explore, climb, break, fall, die, kill things, find the Master Sword if I can. I bet you can do that from the start too. Probably can't use it though. Yeah. I mean, you might be able to pull it out, but I have a feeling it'll be like, the Master Sword is damaged. You cannot use this, or it only, like, it doesn't break, but it only does, like, one point of damage compared to the weapons, other weapons you pick up. That, or it does break, and you have to bring it to a special forge. Ah, uh, but yeah. I actually watched the trailer after I watched the initial introduction part of the live stream, where. Eh. I know I'm gonna butcher his name right now. AG Onam. Eh? <laughs> Uh, the current director of... No, wait, he's not the current director, actually. He's a producer. Enuma? Yeah, Enuma. 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 God damn it. She'll say it right. <laughs> Ember, please. <laughs> Enuma. Uh, yeah, him. Because I think he's actually the um, producer right now. Uh, Sujumi Yamato is supervising producer. Then we have a director below that, I think, is how it's going right now. The same director who actually directed Skyward Sword. It's all kind of complicated now. It's like every time we're like, oh wait, he's the one who makes uh, Zelda now, right? Uh, technically he's just the producer, but he has a lot of the ideas. He's also the guy who goes, hmm, this is all good and everything, and we've made great progress, but start over, which apparently Miyamoto was famous for doing. <laughs> it looks great and everything, but we're starting over. <laughs> uh, and speaking of delays because of start overs, this game actually didn't get delayed because of a start over, it got delayed because they found some new ideas, and they were actually having trouble with their physics engine. So what actually happened was the system, the game wasn't delayed for the NX, it just happened to get delayed and they went, may as well bank it for the NX. So that's where we're getting it on the NX and the Wii U. Now on to Amber, who likes the game? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just rather grateful that we've already previously established that I'm a Legend of Zelda fangirl. <laughs> <laughs> because I am not, oh my god, drooling over this. The E3 trailers from previous years, it was kind of like, oh my god, this looks so cool. These new ones, though I did have some misconceptions. I watched the trailer before I watched the introductory gameplay, so some of my nitpicks were alleviated by watching the opening gameplay. Lux doesn't understand what I'm saying about the brightness level. <laughs> yeah, considering I've watched the trailer like three times now, and every time I'm like, I, I think I may be getting it now, because everything has a slight haze to it, and that may be making it feel too bright to her, but other than that, I'm not quite sure what she's talking about, because this looks like real life, except for the lens flare. Real life, you don't have lens flare, and this is looking through a camera. Yes, so it just feels overly bright and while that's probably very realistic to me it's interfering and distracting with seeing what I want to see and what I want to focus on and the nitpick I had that was corrected by watching the opening gameplay was related to the food items. I really did not want to have to take the time to collect and cook food just to survive. The food replacing hard though is something that I can accept and logically makes more sense than mowing the grass and finding hearts. 
though no scattered hearts, no scattered rupees, apparently this version of Hyrule is so dilapidated that even the Menish have abandoned it. <laughs> well, based on some people's theories, it does take place after the first two games in the series. We may actually be playing the Link from those games. Doesn't look a thing like him. <laughs> uh... Seriously, check your manuals. Doesn't look a thing like him. Well, the art style's changed, young lady. <laughs> uh, and there's that Flutter's high line. I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> Only by a few months. <laughs> uh, what are the um, most positive things you got out of the trailer, then? Am I limited just to the trailer, or can I also include the introductory gameplay? You can include all the footage you've seen. All right, so horseback riding, the stealth aspect seems to be more logical this time, as opposed to the stealth aspects that I get so annoyed with in Ocarina and Time of and Majora's Mask, where, oh no, I've been seen. Back to the beginning. And I was like, oh no, I've been seen. Okay, let's battle. <laughs> Sorry, I just had this image of, oh no, I've been seen. Let's battle, whips out a deck of cards. <laughs> <laughs> then Mokoblins are just standing there going, what? Wrong game. Oh, whoops, paper cut? And even though I was whining about the use of the spear, I do like the variety of weapons. I'm not sure how I feel about that much inventory management. Because things tend to be single use or permanent in this type of video game where, oh, you drank your red potion. It's all gone now, but you still have the bottle. Or this is your shield. You have it. Unless a like like eats it. So that seems to be bringing in more strategy elements that I don't know whether or not I'm interested in. Mm. I'm pretty much interested in everything I've seen so far. So there's a couple of questions that have been brought up in my mind is like, based on how the cooking works, the fact that you can boost your stamina or boost your hearts, are we going to still get heart containers? Or are we just going to always have just three hearts, but we'll be able to mix up a potion that will max us out on having extra hearts that we can use? And you mentioned the bottles. I'm like, will those be coming back? Will we get bottles? Will they break? Will we be able to collect bottles? Because a lot of the conventions are broken with this game, except for waking up. <laughs> so far, that seems to be the only convention that is staying. That and having Microsoft 360 as your office assistant. <laughs> uh, from what I understand, the stuff we've seen in the play game is pretty much it. She doesn't talk much after that part, unless you get to a story section. I wasn't referring to the mysterious voice. I was referring to the Sheikah Slate. <laughs> uh, that doesn't bug you at all. <laughs> from what I understand from the interviews and stuff I've read, the Slate is for there for you to use. Only to use when you want to use it. Not like, sir, your batteries are running low. I know, Fee. Your batteries are running low. I know, Fee. Your batteries are running low. I know, Fee. <laughs> sir, if you take her right here, I know, Fee. <laughs> Yes, and despite all of that, she was not the most annoying thing for me in Skyward Sword. And just to let people know, I love the character Fee. I have no problem with her, and she actually didn't bug me that much. I was just basing it off the stereotype everyone seems to give her, because I guess it's maybe just the way I play, or I'm able to ignore things like that. But I didn't find her annoying at all, or too specific. You didn't find Navi annoying either. You have a high threshold. Apparently. <laughs> Uh, since you brought it up, what did you find most annoying about Skyward Sword? <laughs> the dungeon in the desert with the time mechanic. <laughs> I.e. the place where I stopped playing. I remember you complaining about that now, and I was like, but that was one of my favorite dungeons. I love the time mechanic. I didn't hate the time mechanic. It's just that the way I wanted to solve the puzzles didn't match with the way they wanted me to solve the puzzles. <laughs> but back to Breath of the Wild, what did you find most interesting about what you've seen so far? 
I think how open it is and not just in the, okay, we can go anywhere. There shouldn't be any invisible walls. Cause I don't know how much advantage I would take of that because time factor, <laughs> because otherwise I would probably just keep walking north and see how long it took me to get to the end of the map and what happened once I got there and why I couldn't go any further. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we're either going to get invisible walls or they'll do what they did in Wind Waker and make it loop back. So you'll magically end up on the other side of the map and you go, oh, okay, that works. So I might use that to my advantage. Like, wow, that temple's on the other side of the map. Walk backwards. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, that was a perfectly valid tactic in early arcade and video games. <laughs> Use that in Kid Icarus all the time, back when it was still a platformer. And that reminds me, the first time in a 3D Zelda game, Link can jump on his own. Yes. That's going to add even more strategy to both fighting and exploring, because mm -hmm. we saw jumping being used to enhance climbing. Yep, and you can also jump off of high cliffs and enter into the um, slow-mo mode. I can't remember exactly what it was called, but you can also trigger it by dodging at just the right time from an enemy. And you can get in extra strikes because everything slows down, but you don't. So that was kind of cool. I don't know if that's going to work well or not because bullet time events are hit and miss. Speaking back to Beautiful Joe and Bayonetta... Which are both hits. <laughs> yep. I, I never finished playing Beautiful Joe. And I need to play through the first Bayonetta before I can play the second one. Damn me, my, my linearity. Oh, hello. I have to finish Bravely Default before October. I won't be able to get the outfit for Bravely Second. <laughs> <laughs> uh... But apparently I don't have that trouble with Legend of Zelda games. <laughs> Considering I own several that I have not played, and I own many that I haven't completed. Like, most of them. And yet she's a big fan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, there were certain consoles in the Nintendo line I skipped, so some of the games I didn't have the opportunity to play until they were re-released. Hmm, like Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, and, uh, and Link to the Past. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just so far, everything about this game, I'm really like, ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, that's intriguing. Oh, that's intriguing. I want to know more about the story. Analysts, keep analyzing. I want to know more. Because <laughs> I've been consuming analyst videos like crazy after <laughs> the E3 stuff. And then you have me who's like, um, I don't really want to know. Um... Do I want to know? I kind of want to know. <laughs> is, I'm I'm not hooked yet, and I should be hooked. I mean, not that it isn't beautiful, and not that I don't want to play it, but, you know, I'm not having those moments that I had when I first saw the Twilight Princess trailers of, oh my god, give me this game now, I'm pre-ordering it right this second. <laughs> and then you're like, ah, Nintendo! <laughs> Yes, because I canceled my GameCube pre-order to get a Wii pre-order and then had issues with the Wii controls that were so incredibly frustrating and the opening of the game was so slow. <laughs> Not this game. Oh, you wake up, here's a book. Go have fun! Okay. Well, that's much more like original Legend of Zelda. Screen opens, go into a cave. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Here's a sword. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So it's really in that manner going back to the roots of Legend of Zelda because the very first game has nothing to do with any of the modern games except for the existence of the Triforce and hearts. And even then, it was only two pieces. The original game only had, I think, wisdom and power. We didn't get courage until um, Link to the Past. The remaining Triforce had been broken into eight pieces, which is what you went into the eight dungeons to find. But I remember it only being two pieces of it. But I do remember the original art having three pieces. Hmm, I gotta look at the game again, because I don't remember the end of the original NES game having three pieces. Hmm. Oh well, time to go to the wiki. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you've mentioned it before. Um, what do you think about the weapon system and how weapons are now breakable and stuff like that? It's adding a level of realism 
And I don't know how much realism I want in my video games. Considering that he's still able to stuff all of these items into the pouches he wears around his waist. Hmm. My pockets are bags of holding. I sewed them in because I never wanted to lose anything. <laughs> Yeah, so it's an odd mix of realistic and not, because it's realistic for your item inventory to get used up or damaged. It's unrealistic to be able to carry all of it. It's realistic to cut down a tree. It's unrealistic to keep hitting it and have bundles of firewood magically appear. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I love how they even joked about that. It's like, yeah, they're even neatly put into bundles of firewood for you. <laughs> It's realistic for dangerous looking barrels to explode and for you to take damage if you're too close. It's unrealistic that after that explosion, the spit holding the meat and the fire and the meat are all still perfectly fine. I mean, there's a lot of unrealism in games and it just seems to be an odd mesh of the realistic and the unrealistic. And I wish the climbing animation had been updated a little bit. I'm like, hmm, this looks exactly like climbing in Skyward Sword, and it looks exactly like climbing in Ocarina of Time. Ah, <laughs> oh, your nitpicks are so wonderful. They bring joy to my life. <laughs> yes, and I want a horse, and do we get to have a bird? Because there were birds flying around. Another nitpick, while the quadruped animations seem really, really good, the flight animations still seem a bit clunky. Hmm. And speaking of possible companions, what do you think of being able to use Twilight Princess's Link wolf form in the game? Stupid question. You know I love Wolf Link. <laughs> you just don't like that person on his back. <laughs> I don't hate Midna. I just think it would have been nice to have Wolf Link by himself as an amiibo. <laughs> uh, but I like the fact you can actually have Wolf Link as your companion in this game. And I like the mechanic, too. The only downside is, is once he dies, you can't bring him back until the next day. Mm, more of that realism. It's less about realism and more about, like, they don't want you to have the ability to abuse the fact that you have this powerful wolf creature on your side. Yeah, no spamming special. Though I would like to know how the Wolf Link Amiibo functions on the off chance that you haven't played Twilight Princess or haven't gotten far enough in Twilight Princess to get to the level that they reference that gives Wolf Link his hearts in Breath of the Wild. Ah, he um, defaults to three. But three is such a low number. But that's how he works. If you haven't used him on Twilight Princess, you can tap him to the thing and he has three hearts. I don't know if you can get more hearts in the game for him or you have to only or if you only get them through playing it with Twilight Princess. Mine's still in the box because he's just too damn pretty to take out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want uh, to. I'm, I'm going to have to buy another one of these to be able to play this, aren't I? <laughs> Which would be rather difficult considering it's bundled with the game and thus has a correspondingly higher price tag. Mm hmm. And speaking of amiibos, wow, those amiibos are really freaking pretty. I have a feeling they're going to be like twice the cost of a normal amiibo, but I'm at least getting the Archer Link. <laughs> yeah, they look much more detailed than any other amiibo we've seen up to this point. So these are either going to be twice the price or these are the prototypes and we're going to get the doled down versions. As long as it's not as bad as Link being held up by that stupid yellow pillar. <laughs> I'm very disappointed with that pre-order. <laughs> uh, going back to this shiny new set, to me, Link's ears actually look oversized for him. Yes, I know he's Hylian and has elf-like ears. Don't jump all over me. I'm saying that they look out of proportion for Hylian ears, but I still want the archer. Nah. Like I said, I'm going to go for the archer one. If they're reasonably priced, I might also go for the horse one. I'm not quite so sure about the um, guardian because of those arms. And from what I understand, they're supposed to be posable. So I'm like, ooh, I hope they make them the kind of posable that if they pop out, you can just pop them back in. <laughs> That makes them a little bit more durable that way. Yeah, and until we actually see some 
action with the guardians and I have more of an understanding of why I should care about them, I'm probably not going to go for the guardian amiibo. The link amiibos, that's kind of a given. It's link. Hmm. I wonder if these amiibos will have the same uh, functions as how the other amiibos worked in Twilight Princess, like Zelda would replenish your hearts, Link would give you more arrows, and Ganon would make it harder. So in this case, Arrow Link gives you more arrows, Horseback Link gives you more hearts, or pops a horse up next to you because there's a rumor that you can use other animal-based amiibos in the game and get companions that way. And I was trying to think of other animal-based amiibos and was rather falling short. Though the comedic aspect that came to mind was the squid amiibo from the three pack. Because <laughs> while in squid form, it's technically a squid. Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe you could like tap Star Fox to the controller and get a fox companion. But as I was about to say, but and maybe the guardian makes the game harder, like making it so you take double damage or your potions aren't effective or something like that. Or it summons a one of the guardians next to you and you're like, crud. <laughs> yes. Also, the horse one could also give like a stamina boost to your mount mm, or make your mount go faster mm -hmm. mm, all good points all i know is i i want this game and i want it now <laughs> yes i would like to have it while the wii u is still relevant the last cross generation legend of zelda game release did not work well for me at all and annoyed me to no end i don't even know if i want an nx yet and you guys are already making me go Oh great, I love my Wii U, but now it feels entirely ir irrelevant, and we haven't even gotten the promised Legend of Zelda game yet. I'm going back <laughs> and playing more Splatoon. <laughs> oh shoot, I need to do that too. There's a Splatfest coming up and I have done no practice. Actually, I have no, done no practice for the last couple of months. I've missed at least two Splatfests, and I haven't played in so long. I've been working too much. <laughs> oh... <laughs> Ah, well, my final thoughts on this is I can't wait for the game to come out. There's so much interesting stuff. Like, I'm pretty sure that voice is Zelda, but it's not confirmed yet. The voice actress is pretty good. All these little tidbits people are giving out. There's hints in the videos everywhere, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> so pretty. And why does Link have to look so good in shorts? I mean, uh, Link, uh, Link is awesome. Yes. Yes, it's. I don't feel like we often get a lot of fan service in a Legend of Zelda game, but I guess Nintendo decided, well, this one time maybe sex sells. <laughs> uh, so, you, do you have any final thoughts other than sex sells? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want that to be my ending comment. <laughs> <laughs> They've built a huge game here. I doubt, in terms of memory storage. The Wii U's internal hard drive could even handle it, even if you had no other games. <laughs> and that this is going to be a massive, hundreds and hundreds of hours experience if you want to explore all of it. And I'm hoping that there's a post-game option, where even if you beat it, you could still go and continue to explore. Because I think it's a little bit of sensory overload. There's so much to look at and see and do, and so many options. Hmm. Maybe they'll do what they did in the original Zelda, where after you beat the game, you play the game again with a different name, uh, so everything changes. You didn't have to play with a different name if you actually beat the name. Putting in a specific name for your character was the cheat code to automatically go to the second world layout. How else do you think I played both worlds? <laughs> But like I said, maybe they'll do something like that for this game. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild E3 Impressions. Thank you for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lux's art? He also has a Patreon page and does take commissions. Please check the link below for commission availability.